Live from Boston, Massachusetts, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering HP Big Data Conference 2015, brought to you by HP Software. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Boston, Massachusetts for HP's Big Data Conference. This is a special presentation of theCUBE, our flagship program, where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante here, Wikibon on Research. Our next guest, Stephanie McReynolds, uh, VP Market Alation, hot new startup um, that's been kind of coming out of stealth that's out there. Um, Big data, a lot of great stuff. Stephanie, welcome to theCUBE. Great Thank to see you. you. Great to be here. Um, tell us about the startup, first of all, because uh, good buzz going on. It's kind of stealth buzz, but it's really with the, the thought leaders and really the, you know, the people in the industry who know what they're talking about, like what you guys are doing. So, so introduce the company and tell us what you guys are doing and relationship with Vertica and it's exciting stuff. Absolutely, yeah, Alation is an exciting company. We just started to come out of stealth in March of this year. Um, we came out of stealth with some great production customers. So eBay is a customer. Um, they have hundreds of analysts using our system. We also have Square as a customer. Smaller analytics team, but the, the value that analytics teams are getting out of this product is really being able to access their data in human context. So we do some machine learning to look at how individuals are using data in an organization and take that machine learning and um, also gather some of the human insights about how that data is being used um, by experts, surface that all in line within workflows. So what, what kind of data? Because Stonebreaker was kind of talking yesterday about the three Vs, which we all know. But yeah. the one that's really coming mainstream in terms of a problem space is variety. Variety, you have the different variety of schema sources, and then you have a lot of unstructured exhaust or data flying around. Can you be specific on what you guys do? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because uh, there's several definitions of, of data and big data going around, right? And so, um, you know, we connect to a lot of database systems and we also connect to a lot of Hadoop implementations. So we deal with both structured data as well as what I consider unstructured data. And I think the third part of what we do is bringing context from um, human created data or human information with which Robert uh, yesterday was talking about a, a little bit, which is, you know, what happens in a lot of analytic organizations is that um, there's a very manual process of, of documenting some of the data that's being used in these projects. And that's mm -hmm. done on wiki pages or spreadsheets that are floating around the organization. And that's actually a really rich. Slack, Basecamp, Slack, all these collaboration. All these, all these collaboration platforms. And what you realize when you start to really get into the work of, of using um, that information to try to write your queries is that trying to reference a wiki page and then write your SQL and flip back and forth between maybe 10 different documents is not very productive for the analyst. So what our customers are seeing is that by consolidating all of that data and information in one place where the tables are actually referenced side by side with the annotations, their analysts can get from 20 to 50% savings in productivity. And new analysts, maybe more importantly, new analysts can get up to speed uh, quite a bit quicker. Um, at, at Square the other day, I was talking to one of the, the data scientists and he was, he was talking about you know, his process for finding data in the organization, which uh, prior to using Alation, it would take him about 30 minutes going to maybe three or four people to find the data he needed for his analysis. Um, and with Alation, in five seconds, he can run a query, search for the data he wants, gets it back, gets all, kind of all that expert annotation already around that base data set, and he's ready to roll. He can start um, testing some of his hypotheses. So you call it a platform, <clears throat> right? You've heard it was a platform, and, it, and, and you said you work with a lot of database, the databases, right? So it's tightly integrated with the database in this use case? Or? So it's interesting. Um, you know, we see databases as a source of, of information. So we don't create copies of the data on our platform. We go out and point to the data where it lies um, and surface that, you know, that data to, to the end user. Now, in the case of uh, Vertica and our relationship with Vertica, um, we've also integrated Vertica into our stack uh, to support what we call data forensics which is the ability for not an analyst who's using the system day to day, um, but for an IT individual to understand what are the behaviors around this data and the types of analysis that are being done. Uh, and so um, Vertica's a great high performance platform for dashboarding and, and business intelligence, the back end of that, providing you know, quick access to aggregates. So one of the- Well, what part of Vertica are you guys? Just the engine, what specifically, again? Yeah, so, so we use the, the, Vertica, the Vertica engine underneath our forensics uh, product. Um, and then 
the, that's a, you know one portion of our, our, our platform. The rest of our platform uh, is built out on other other technologies. So Vertic is part of your solution. Is it's that part right? of our solution. It's it's one application that we part of one application that we deliver. So we've been talking all, all week about this. I mean, Colin Mahoney in his talk yesterday. I don't know if you saw it, but he gave a little history on ER, uh, ERP, uh, how initially it was highly customized and it became packaged apps, um, and he, he sort of pointed to a similar track with analytics. Although he said it's not going to be the same, it's going to be more composable sort of applications. I, I wonder, if, and, and historically the analytics and the database have been closely aligned, I'll say, not, maybe not integrated. Do you see that model continuing? Uh, do you see it more packaged apps or more, this is what Colin's calling composable apps? What's the relationship between your pa platform and, and the application layer? Yeah, so our platform is, is really more tooling for those individuals that are building or creating those applications. So we're helping data scientists and analysts find what algorithms they want to use as a foundation for those applications. So a little bit more on the discovery side where folks are doing a lot of experiment, um, experimentation, they may be having to prepare data in different ways in order to figure out what might work for those applications. Um, and that's where we fit in as a, as, a, as a vendor. And what's your license model? And so, you know, we're on a subscription model. We have customers that have data teams in the, in the hundreds at a place like eBay. You know, the smaller implementations could be maybe just teams of five analysts, 10 analysts, fairly small groups. So it's groups. a seat-based subscription? Um, it's a, it's a seat-based sub subscription, but we can run in the cloud, we can run on-premise. Um, we do some interesting things around uh, securing the data where you can um, see your columns but not the data sets for financial services organizations and our customers that have um, security concerns, and most of those are on-premise app implementations. Stephanie, so talk about the inspiration of the company and about the company. I think it's been around three years since then came out of Stealth. Right. What's the founders like? What's the DNA of the company? What do you guys do differently? And what was the inspiration behind this? Yeah, what's really what's really interesting, I think, about the founding of the company is that um, the technical founders come from both Google and Apple. So you have an interesting observation that, that both individuals had made independently. Hardcore about algorithmic guy, and then like relevant, clean. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, well like. and, and, and both folks kind of made interesting observations about how Google and Apple, two of the most data-driven companies you know, on, on the planet, were struggling, and their analytics teams were struggling with being able to share queries and share data sets, and there was a lot of replication of work that was happening. Oh and so, it must have been a nightmare. Um, yeah. you know, but both of these folks from different angles kind of came together at, at Alation and said, look, there's, there's a lot of machine learning uh, algorithms that could help with this process. And there's also a lot of good ways with natural language processing to let people interact with their data in more natural ways. Mm -hmm. um, the, the founder from, from Apple, Aaron, he, uh, he was on the Siri team, so he had a lot of experience designing products um, for navigability and ease of use and, and natural language learning. And so those two perspectives coming together have created some technology fundamentals in our product um, and they had some experience exciting. too, some scar tissue from large scale implementations of, of data. Yeah, very large scale implementations of data and also a, a really deep awareness of what the human equation brings to the table. So machine learning algorithms aren't enough in and of themselves. And I think Ken Rudin had some interesting comments this morning where you know, he kind of pushed it one step further and said, it's not just about finding insight. Data science about is about having impact and you can't have impact unless you create human context and you have communication and collaboration around the data. So we give analysts a query tool by which we surface the, the machine learning context that we have about the data that's being used in the organization and what queries have been run on that data, but we surface it in a way where the human can get recommendations about how to improve their, their SQL and drive towards impact and then share that understanding with other analysts in the organization, so you get an innovation community that's started. So who are you guys targets? Let's step back and okay, go to market now, you guys are launched, um, got some funding, can you share the amount, or is it private, confidential, or what was, how much did you raise, who are you targeting, what's your go to market, what's the value proposition, give us the, give us the this data. Yeah, so, so the, the initial value proposition is just really about analyst productivity. That's where we're targeted. How can you take your teams of analysts, and everyone knows it's hard to hire these days, so you're not going to be able to grow those teams out overnight. How do you make the analysts, the data scientists, the PhDs you have on staff, 
much more productive? How do you take that yeah. 80 to 90% of the time that they're- Get them using stuff, sharing data. Get them using stuff, get them sharing data. Try to get them out of the tedium of trying to just find data in the organization and prepare it and let them really innovate um, and and use that to drive value back to the to the organization. So we're often selling to individual analysts, to analytics teams. Um, the go-to-market starts there, and the value proposition really extends much further in the organization. So, you know, you find teams and organizations that have been trying to document their data through traditional data governance means or ETL tools for a very long time, and a lot of those projects have stalled out. Um, the way that we crawl systems and use machine learning automation um, to automate some of that documentation really gives those projects an, a new life in a lot of work. Enterprise data has always been elusive. I mean, if you go back decades, structured data, all these pre-built pre databases, it's been hard, right? So it's if you can crack that nut, that's going to be a very lucrative, <laughs> um, and there's opportunities now. You got Hadoop clusters now, storing everything. I mean, some clients we talk to here on theCUBE yeah. or customers of say, HP or IBM and our big companies, they're storing everything just because they don't know what to do with it yet. Yeah, I mean, the, the past has been hard in part because we've, in some cases, over-managed the modeling of the data. And I think what's exciting now about storing all your data in Hadoop and storing first and then asking questions later is you're able to take a more discovery-oriented, hypothesis testing, iterative approach. And if you think about how true innovation works, you know, you build insights on top of one another to get to the big breakthrough concepts. And so I think we're at an interesting point in the market for a solution like this um, that can help with that increasing complexity of data environments. So you just raised your Series A, raised nine million, you maybe did some seed round before that. Uh, so pretty early days for you guys. You mentioned natural language processing before one of your founders. Are you using NLP in, in your solution in any way? Or? So we have, a, we have a search interface that allows you to look for that technical data, to look for metadata and for data objects. Um, by entering uh, a simple simple natural language search term. So mm -hmm. we are using that as, as part of our interface and solution. Great, and so kind of early customer successes, can you talk about any examples or? Yeah, I, you know, there's some great examples um, jointly with Vertica, Square is a, is a customer um, and their analytics team is using us on a day-to-day on a -day basis, not only to, to find data sets in the organization, but to document mm -hmm. those, those data sets um, eBay has um, hundreds of analysts that are using Alation today in a day-to-day -day manner. Um, they've seen quite a bit of productivity out of their new analysts that are coming on the systems. It used to take analysts about 18 months to really get their feet around them in the eBay environment because of the complexity of all of the different systems at eBay and um, understanding where to go for that customer table <laughs> you know, that they needed to use. Um, now analysts are up and running about six months. Um, and their data governance team has found that Alation has really automated and prioritized the process around documentation for them. And so it's a great, it's laid a great foundation for then their um, data curators and data stewards to go in and, and enrich the data and collaborate more with the analysts and the actual data users to get to a, a point of cataloged, cataloged data that's useful. So what's next? You guys going to be on the road uh, in New York, for Stratic Hadoop World, um, Big Data NYC is coming up, a Absolutely. big event in New York. Uh, Absolutely. The Cube will be so there. We're, we're getting the word out about right. uh, Alation and, and what we're doing. We have um, customers that are you know, starting to speak about their use cases and the value that they're seeing. Um, we'll be in New York, Market Share, I believe, will be speaking on our behalf there to share their stories. And uh, then we're also going to a couple other conferences after that. You know, the fall is a, an exciting time for- Which one's your big ones there? So uh, we'll be at Strata in New York, yeah. uh, end of September, early October, and then mid-October, we're going to be at both uh, Teradata Partners uh, and um, Tableau's conference as well. So Great. we connect not only to yeah. databases of all different sorts, but also to so the, the users intelligence are. tools. Yeah, awesome. Well, um, anything else you'd like to add, share with the company, it's awesome. We heard some great things about you guys, been checking around, obviously uh, found out about you guys, and a lot of people like the company. I mean, a lot of insiders, like, hmm, little secret. You didn't raise too much cash, 
Um, you guys raised, that's not the million, zillion dollar round. I think what, did you raise like nine million? Yeah, we raised nine million and I, you know, I think we're building this company in a traditional value oriented way, right? We're, hey, we're what tracking a great revenue, idea. Hey, we're stay <laughs> bringing in uh, <laughs> revenue and trying to balance that out with uh, venture capital investment. And it's not that we won't take money, but we want to build this company in a yes, very valuable a durable way. So the vision is to build a durable company. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, and that may be different than, than some of our competitors out there these days. But that's yeah, uh, the I mean, path we think. Dave and I have not taken success. any financing on SiliconANGLE at all. So you know, again, we believe in that, and you might pass up some things, but you know what? Have control, and you guys have some good partners. So congratulations. Thank you. Um, final word: What's this conference like? You go to a lot of events. What's your take on this on this event? Yeah, I do, I do end up going to a lot of events as part of the, the marketing role. Um, you know, I think what's interesting about this conference is that um, there are a lot of great conversations that are happening, um, and happening not just from a technology perspective, but yeah. also uh, between business people and a uh, deep thinking about how to innovate. And Vertica's customers, I think, are, are some of the most loyal customers I've seen in the, in the market, so it's great to see And they're excitement. advanced, too. They're talking about some pretty big problems that they're solving. It's not like little point solutions, it's more re-architecting. Some DevOps, I had a DevOps, I'm I got trashed on Twitter, private messages all last night about me calling this a DevOps show. It's not really a DevOps cloud show, but there's a DevOps vibe here. The people who are working on these solutions. I think there's just a real, a real vibe. People are solving real problems and they're talking about them and they're sharing their opinions and I, I think that's you know that's similar to what you see in DevOps. The guys yeah. in DevOps are on the front line. They're real they, engineers. <laughs> they're yeah, engineering they, stuff. <laughs> yeah, they have to engineer because of the, the pressures. No pretenders under, here, so. that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, we were talking earlier. I mean, it's not a big sales conference, right? It's a lot of customer content. Yeah, they're engineering right. solutions. Talking to people. They don't want the bullshit. They want real. I, I'm in. I got a lot on the table. I'm gonna. I'm doing some serious work, and I want serious conversations. And that's refreshing for us. I mean, we love. Love events like this. <laughs> All right, Stephanie, thanks for so much for coming on theCUBE, sharing your insight, congratulations. Thank Good you. luck with the new startup. Hot startups here in Boston, here at the Vertica HP Software Show. We'll be right back, more on theCUBE after this short break.